Imagine a world without version control, without intelligence, building code without completion, without help, like developing in a notepad. Imagine that. It is query, right? Yeah. It happened back in the days with Salesforce development. We had uh, a support force.com plugin for uh, Eclipse. It didn't have any Italian sense to it. It's like building the code uh, in the dark, copying the code, uh, open the, the portal on Salesforce, pasting the code there and see if it works. So uh, writing the code on local, like in notepads, uh, whatever, copying the code, try out, it was really difficult. But now, today, with a plugin in Visual Studio Code with Salesforce DX, we have the power. Everything become easy. S developing in Salesforce, it became a pleasure. It became something you want to do. In this video, I will introduce you the Salesforce DX. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Fazal Patel. Welcome to my channel. Today, I will explain you how to configure Salesforce DX on your computer and using a Visual Code extension to empower your Salesforce development. Subscribe to my channel for video like this, tech tutorials and live coding videos. So first, uh, install a Visual Studio Code on your computer. Once you have the Visual Studio Code installed, let's install the Salesforce uh, development pack from the extensions. Uh, on your left, on Visual Studio Code, click on extensions, shares for Salesforce. You have their Salesforce extension pack. Click on it. You have details about uh, what is included in this pack, Salesforce CLI integration, Apex, Visual Force, our components, Apex Interactive Debugger, Lightning Web Components, Apex Replay Debugger, and Salesforce Design System Validator. So let's install all the pack. Everything here is, in, is useful. If you want to create a, a Lightning Web Component right from your computer, and then deploy it to a test work, scratch work. In your uh, development work, you can do it everything from Visual Studio Code. So I click on install. It's installing the Salesforce extension pack. It will take some time. I will fast forward this video. I will install the Windows version. It's the one that Visual Studio Code will use to run the Salesforce CLI commands. To start, click on Download for Windows 64. When you double click on the installer, uh, it will pop up uh, this window. You, you select all of them, all the components, the Salesforce CLI, the path, so adding the path of the Salesforce CLI and other configurations for Windows. You click Next. It will by default install on the program file Salesforce CX and you click Install. The installation is ready. Let's go to the Visual Studio Code. After installing the extensions pack on Visual Studio Code and installing the CLI, Salesforce CLI for Windows, let's create a new Salesforce project. Let's go to Command Palette and look for Project. Create, um, create Project with manifest it's a standard project and the name for the project i will call it demo uh, underscore 
Salesforce DX. Enter. It will pop up. It will pop up the Windows Explorer uh, to let me choose where to store the the project. Visual Studio Code will create the project and open for this particular project. On your left, you have the structure of the Salesforce project. The package XML manifest file is a file to control the metadata of Salesforce resources on your local. Um, this is to, to choose what you want to download from your Salesforce org or what you want to send, what you want to deploy to your Salesforce dev org or uh, a scratch org or a sandbox org. Uh, you can create as many scratch org from your uh, development org, from your production org. Uh, they are like temporary uh, 30 days orgs to test your feature, to test your code. Inside the force app, you have the folder structure for all the resources type you can have on Salesforce classes, flexi pages, our uh, permission sets, static resources tabs, triggers, layouts, uh, and applications. Now uh, the file structure is empty because uh, we just created an empty project. Let's connect this project with a Salesforce org. I have a Salesforce dev org. I will connect this project with that. For that, go to View, Command Palette, Authorize an org. If you don't see this option, look for it. Shares Authorize an org. Click Authorize an org. Select Production as a default. Uh, leave it as it is and click Enter. It will pop up a window pop-ups um, a default browser and asks you to insert uh, your credentials. I have my credentials saved. I just click connect. It asks you allow access for Salesforce CLI. The Salesforce CLI is asking access to basic information, provide access uh, to your data via the web, access and manage your data, perform requests on your behalf at any time. So if we want to take, uh, download some packages from Salesforce or deploy, uh, Salesforce CLI needs to have access um, uh, to the org. So I click allow. Now I'm logged in to my Salesforce org. I will go back to Visual Studio Code. It will say Salesforce DX authorized an org successfully. We will use the package XML to ask Salesforce, the org that I'm connecting, to download uh, the resources. So I ask to download Apex classes Apex components, Apex page, Apex test suite, triggers, our definition bundle, lightning component bundle. I right click on the file and I select retrieve source in manifest form org. What I can do also, I can deploy source in manifest to org. So if I created, let's say, a lightning web component or Apex class or any other resource locally, I can just deploy it to, to Salesforce. If the resource that I'm trying to connect is not defined as a type here, uh, here in the package, I have to add here another type, member and name to the manifests so that the manifest recognize which are of the resources he needs to send to the Salesforce org or to retrieve from the Salesforce org. Okay. You can you can look at the Salesforce documentation, all the type names 
for all the resources you can have in Salesforce. So I right click and retrieve source in manifest from the arc. It's contacting the my Salesforce arc that I just connected with it and downloading all the resources uh, here described in manifest. Visual Studio Code gave me a message that retrieve source from Arc successfully run. I go to classes. I can see all the classes that I have on my Arc. So each class has a metadata XML. It contains the AP version and the status. If the class, if the resource is active or not, you can have resource active or not in Salesforce. So .cls is my Apex code. So on the package XML, I said that I want to retrieve all, like I put a star, all Apex classes. I can just specify what are the classes I want to get. Because if I have a, a big org, I want to work in a subset of classes for my future, from my component. I don't need to download all the classes from the org. I can just choose what are the classes I need, what are the other component specific components I need to download from the work and do my project. Components. Uh, I have here all the components. Uh, layouts. I didn't specify any layouts here on the package manifest. So it didn't download anything related to layouts. Uh, nothing uh, nothing related to objects and pages so I asked to download to retrieve from my Salesforce org all the Apex pages so it downloaded all it's the same thing for Apex class I don't need to download all I can specify what are the Apex pages I want to have on my local machine and the rest I have the triggers so I ask here Apex triggers so it downloads uh, all the triggers okay so uh, this is a good tool a Salesforce DX is enables you to connect with the arc uh, quickly uh, download assets download uh, resources that you want from your work to work with and then uh, you can upload uh, using deploy source in manifest to work you can deploy uh, the changes files to work and tests on work you can do the tests here right away from the visual studio code you can run the apex unit test for example you can you can see the coverage uh, how much the test covers your uh, in terms of percentage uh, each of the apex class and also uh, from uh, the Salesforce DX, you can also create classes, components, web components, and then deploy it to your org. Uh, be in mind that when you create a new component, if the component type is not defined here on the manifest, you need to add it. Or imagine that uh, you downloaded just a subset uh, specific Apex classes, specific Apex components, etc. Uh, if you want to upload specific components as well, you can do that. So you don't need to, to deploy everything you, you have on local. You can just choose to deploy some of the resources you created. That's all about the Salesforce DX tool. Uh, in this tutorial, we cover how to use the Salesforce tool, the benefits of Salesforce tool and how to use it in Visual Studio Code. Uh, we also show how to configure Salesforce DX on Windows and uh, connect to a work. 
create an empty project and retrieve metadata. Thank you for watching. See you next time.